like I said in the video yesterday, yeah, yesterday, uh, I have watched um, Willy's Wonderland. Um, freaky, 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 but fun. Anyway, um, I'm going to prefix this one anyway, just with a quick spoilers. Anyone that wants to know um, anything about it, carry on watching. If you don't want things to be spoiled, look away now. Because spoilers are in effect, baby. Yeah. This one, obviously, everyone knows. It's kind of like, you know, Five Nights at Freddy's. Still rocking the jumper. But yeah, uh, yeah Five Nights at Freddy's inspired movie. <laughs> Basically, movie number two out of the inspired, apart from the um, whatever it was, the banana splits, which basically apparently used off of some of the old thrown away thingies. But this one is nothing like that one. This one, there is a lot of parts where it takes off from like the books, so like Silver Eyes and Twisted Ones, things like that. The start of it, um, where if the two people who are uh, running around inside um, the place that is quite um, a, ugh, quite epitomizing of the movie itself there's a lot of moments where you don't know what's going on it does take a while for it after that first initial scene to build um, but once Nicolas Cage his character um, rolls up no one knows who his name is because he doesn't speak a freaking lick of English at all he just grunts and yells and yelps well, he's just bashing the brains out of all of the things that he's trying to smash. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there that is um, quite funny. One thing I will warn you about is some of the music that is in there will get stuck in your head. Because for the, like, you know, after I'd watched it, all I could hear was, It's your birthday, everybody come have fun. And then the um, more heavy metal, slightly heavy metal, more pop rocky kind of like, Willie's Wonderland. Take it stuck in your head, so you will get a bit of an earworm um, with those. So <laughs> you will be having a bit of fun with those. Anyway, um, but yeah, going back to that. So the character that he's playing, the, his car breaks down. Um, as we find out further in the movie, the uh, basically the police chief has stuck out uh, spike strips or zigzag, as they call it, uh, to burst people's tires and to um, feed the uh, creatures inside. Now, we don't know about that until later on, but, spoiler for further down, uh, the guys of this little kind of like backwater town have decided that they would make a deal with the devil. Because the original guy that owned Willy's Wonderland made a deal with the devil. Because they were very, very, very nasty people. They were serial killers and they were depraved. They would get people away into one of the super happy fun rooms and they would get the animatronics to come through to murder them. Now Willie obviously being the weasel there is a kind of like a, a, a furry girl not not furry as in furry but fairy as in kind of like you know the, the fairy god, godmother sort of creature. There's a crocodile or alligator I think I've forgotten a lot of the characters but a lot of them are really, really freaky. They are incredibly freakish. The way that they get murdered, though, is quite fun. Well, I'll cover that in a moment. But as the story progresses, he gets taken to this... Uh, so he gets taken to the police chief, who then says... Uh, they drive by the police chief after his car has been picked up to go to be repaired. Uh, the police chief is busy with her daughter who has been trying to destroy Willie's for quite a while now. She locked her up in the trailer and then disappears back off to her office, whereas Nicholas Cage's character is taken to the garage, which the garage owner is also in on all of this bajazz that goes on. They then tell him that his car cannot be fixed. It's going to be about a thousand bucks, but they don't have the ATM because there's no internet there and all this yada, yada, yada. So they take him to the guy who now owns Willie's. They then do a deal with him to go stay overnight in Willie's to do the cleaning. This is where the fun begins. Now, he has a big pack of lemonade or fizzy soda or something that he sticks in the fridge at Willie's. 
and he's got a watch which gives him break times. Now it's like these break times are his sort of like power up moments. And for the first moment, nothing really happens apart from a little bit of noise. After his first break in the break room, he then notices a few things have changed and some of the critters are moving about. The first one is Ozzy the ostrich. Which he dispatches Kung Fu style. And he absolutely bashes his head in with a flipping mop. Then reaches in, rips its spine out, and ticks the power pack thing or chip out to make sure it can't do. He stores the head in a tr black trash bag by the door because he can't get out. So he goes back, sorts himself out, then he then becomes obsessed with this pinball machine. So he becomes the pinball wizard through the night, while he's also murdering animatronics. All through, he does a number of massive, massive murders. But he cleans everything up. It's like the gorilla guy in the, in the toilets. He annihilates him, puts him through the urinal. So the animatronic's jaw is all smashed down. Don't really see him rip the spine out of that one, but you do notice the head is somewhere else after he's cleaned it up. Now the kid gets rescued by her friends. So they get her from the trailer, then they make a pact to go to Willie's, sort this out, try to free whoever the guy is that Nicholas Cage is playing. They realise after they've got in that Anything that goes in there that is not human is more at danger from Nicolas Cage than anything else. Now the girl goes in, she's armed with a penknife. She ends up finding that fairy creature after she's gone through the vent and all that. Bajaz. Um, so she gets attacked by that, tries to stab it, or she has stabbed it once or twice. Nick Cage walks into the room after hearing the ruckus. Picks her up, moves her over to the side, gives the fairy a bit of a beat down, which he then runs away for a while. He does, still doesn't say a word at this point. The other lot are up on the roof arguing with each other. One of them takes a swipe at the other after one's turned around and said, Nah, F this, I'm out. They then plunge through the roof into the ball pit. Sent more mayhem in shoes because that awakes everything else inside that building and then more and more and more. Now I'm not going to break down any more of this bit from there but all I can say is right getting close to the end everything else ensues. They then give him all of the word down of the reasons behind it all, the evilness that's gone on, all of the kids that have been murdered, all the people that have gone missing, everything else like that, the original owners, all of that lot. They then break off after they've all had their arguments. Two of them who are a couple decide that they want to find the place where the murders happened to get jiggy. So they find this super happy fun room. They have super happy fun time in a satanic room whilst they're being watched by one of the animatronics unbeknownst to them at first until it moves. He then murderalises both of them after they've just got off. So I'll just brush over that. But everything comes down to it. The police chief ends up finding out what's going on because they've ended up getting a call from one of the kids that they are in willies and that, you know, like that. So it's basically the police chief goes back in, um, busts them all, handcuffs Nicholas Cage, sticks him on the main thing in front of Willie. To be fed to Willie, gets the kids out, or what's left of the kids, anyway, the ones that aren't, haven't been murdered. Takes the kid out, gives the kid to the new, to one of the people who's there just to add business on the cover, to earn a bit of extra money. The kid is then driven away in another cop car, which then, she then ends up talking to this cop who is 
unbeknownst to any of all of this, what's actually going on. She then gives him a bit of a, a talking to to basically get him back into his senses. Now, they don't realise that they've been followed at that point by a Mexican-speaking creature. Who then pounces on the car, pops the cop. Then she grabs the gun, so the shotgun, but that animatronic has unseated the gun, basically just got rid of all the ammo out of it. So she then just decides to just absolutely destroy this thing with the gun. So she just goes absolutely crack happy and just bats away at it with the butt of the gun. So it's bloodied, not been destroyed yet because its cord and, cord and chip haven't been ripped out, but its demise comes later down. She then staggers her way back to Willie's. Nicholas Cage has now cracked the neck of that fairy after giving it a bit of a thigh squeeze and twisting. Been and watching some of the others move about has then snapped out of the cuffs, goes back to the break room, has, his, has another soda, recovers, puts some more pinball, comes out and starts crack happying again with what is left. Final scene with Willy. He absolutely obliterates Willy after almost getting beaten down. But hey, it's Nicolas Cage. You can't keep him down for long. After, especially after he's been bloodied and all sorts of stuff like that. So he ends up in a ball pit halfway through the fight with Willy. Hides in the ball pit, waits for Willy to disappear. Goes, sorts himself out, cleans himself up. There's another recovery, gets a fresh shirt. All in all, I think he's gone through like seven or eight different flipping Willy's Wonderland shirts at this point. Well, he's like, you know, gone through all of that, destroyed every single one of them that he can get hold of. And then he's basically in, finds a way, destroys Willy. Rips its head off. Cleans everything else up. Day comes. Shitface owners decide that they want to then crack the door open after messing about in his car. They then find out that he's done that. He then just walks straight past them, sticks his hand out, gets his car keys back, goes to his car, goes to drive off. The kid is walking back over to him. He then gets the kid in his car. They slowly drive off. Now, the fairy is was in the dumpster has now crawled out of the dumpster gone to the crooked owner's car hidden in the back seat they get in the car after celebrating that they can you know that it that the curse is all over they don't need to do any more of the shit they then start to start the car after coming up with an idea for a quick party. She then hops out with looks like a hand grenade or something, blows them up, destroying herself too. As Nick Cage drives down the road, they see this Mexican like, turtle thing, whatever it is, in the road. He puts his foot down, annihilates it, just destroys it in a second by like, splatting it with his car. All of those tronics got ended. So was this from a one-off? Probably. I don't know. Where do I rate it? For what it was, for the material that you can see that it's ripping from. Quite fun. A lot of fun. One or two little things in there that did make it a little bit slow for me, but hey, I don't mind. Nicolas Cage not talking was a bit strange at first, but when you just start concentrating just on the action, you get used to it a bit more. But other than that, not bad, not bad. It's one of those movies that you put on just to have a laugh at. Because some of the some of the things weren't exactly all that brilliant. You know, some of the sets were a little bit wobbly at times and some things were a little bit unbelievable. But hey, then again, if it takes from the Five Nights at Freddy's universe, that's quite unbelievable too. But then again, that's become quite a big powerhouse on itself. 
So, in regards to that, Nick Cage in there, yeah, it's brilliant. Don't know how much of the budget they spent on his wages, but it's reportedly to be uh, F and what. The stuff that they did in there with all the stuff. Don't know why all the animatronics have blood in them, though. But, hey, whatever. It's all part of the fun. But, you know, it's not bad. Uh, I give it, I'm going to say, I'm going to just say a 7 out of 10 of a movie. It's more of an unbelievable laugh. The fact that they did leave the kink sex in there. There's always got to be something in there, you know. They've always got to just source it up just a little bit. You know, they've always just got to do that. They've always got to source it up. The The acting at that point was a little bit hammy. I've seen better work with amateur porn stars. That's all I'm going to say. But, you know, not bad of a movie. For everything that's in there, the, the other people that were in there, whatever the budget was on that, it was pretty good. So, stick down below what you think. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe, share the hell out of this. Let's see what we can do. Anyway, Foxstar1387 signing out. Peace!